Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on adding the report viewer component in an ASP.NET Core application. In this video, we will see how to create an ASP.NET Core reporting web application to display an SSRS RDL report using the Bold Reports ASP.NET Core report viewer. Let's create an ASP.NET Core application. Open Visual Studio 2019 and click Create New Project. Choose C# from the drop-down. Now, choose ASP.NET Core Web Application, and then click Next. Change the project name, and then click Create. Bold Reports ASP.NET Core Report Viewer works in ASP.NET Core version 2.x and ASP.NET Core version 3.x. Choose the ASP.NET Core version. For this video, I am choosing ASP.NET Core version 3.1. Then select the Web Application Model View Controller template, and click Create. Now let's install the NuGet packages. Right-click the project in the Solution Explorer tab, and choose Manage NuGet Packages. In the Browse tab, search for boldreports.aspnet.core package, and install it in your core application. Similarly, install the remaining packages boldreports.net.core and system.data.sql client. I have mentioned the purpose of each package in the following table. The boldreports.net.core package creates a web API service to process the reports. The boldreports.aspnet.core package creates a client-side reporting control using tag helpers. System.data.sql client is an optional package. It should be installed when the RDL report contains a SQL server or SQL Azure data source. The following table provides details about the dependency packages and their uses. The syncfusion.compression.net.core package is a base library for the PDF, DocIO, and XLSIO packages. The syncfusion.pdf.net.core package is used for exporting RDL or RDLC reports in PDF format. The syncfusion.docio.net.core package is used for exporting RDL or RDLC reports in Word format. The syncfusion.xlsio.net.core package is used for exporting RDL or RDLC reports in Excel format. The syncfusion.officechart.net.core package is a base library for the XLSIO package. The newtonesoft.json package is used to serialize and deserialize data for report viewer. The dependent packages will be installed automatically on installing the boldreports.net.core package. Let's reference scripts and a theme. In this video I am using CDN links to reference scripts and a theme. You can also use local scripts and theme, I have included an FAQ link about them in the video description. Open the views, shared, underscore layout.cshtml page and reference the following code in the head tag. The purpose of each script and CSS file is explained in the following table. Bold.reports.all.min.css includes the CSS properties for the JavaScript reporting component. The jQuery 1.10.2 script is used to render the Syncfusion JavaScript reporting widgets. EJ2Base.min.js, EJ2Data.min.js, EJ2PDFExport.min.js, and EJ2SVGBase.min.js are used to render the gauge item. EJ2LinearGauge.min.js renders the linear gauge report item. EJ2CircularGauge.min.js renders the circular gauge report item. EJ2Maps.min.js is used to render the map report item. EJ.Chart.min.js renders the chart report item. Bold.Reports.Common.min.js, Bold.Reports.Widgets.min.js, and bold.reportviewer.min.js are mandatory to render the bold reports report viewer. Now let's initialize a tag helper. Open the underscore view imports.cshtml page and initialize the report viewer component with tag helper support. Let's configure the bold report script manager. Open the layout.cshtml page and replace the code in the body tag.
The reporting script manager in the body element places the report viewer control initialization script in the web page. In order to initialize the scripts properly, the script manager should be included at the end of the body element. Let's initialize the report viewer. Open the home index.cshtml page and replace it with the following code. Now let's add an already created report. Create a folder named resources in the www root folder in your application. This is where we will keep the RDL reports. For this video, I am going to add the sales order detail.rdl file to the resources folder. You can get the sales order detail.rdl file from the video description. I have also included a link to more samples and demos in the video description. Let's configure the web API. The ASP.NET Core Report Viewer requires a web API service to process the RDL, RDLC, and SSRS report files. Right click the controller folder and select Add New Item from the context menu. In the Add New Item dialog, select API Controller class and name it Report Viewer Controller.cs. And then click Add. In the Report Viewer Controller file, add the following using statement. Inherit the RPort Controller interface. And then implement its methods. The iRPort controller interface has a declaration of action methods that are defined in the Web API controller for processing RDL, RDLC, and SSRS reports, and for handling resource requests from the report viewer control. The iRPort controller has the action method declarations. The post report action method is used to post the request in the report process. The on init report options method is invoked when the report is about to be processed. Here, I have loaded the sales order detail.rdl report from the resources under www root folder. The on report loaded method is invoked when the report and subreport start loading. The get resource method is used to get the resource from the report. The report helper class contains helper methods that help to process a post or get request from the report viewer control and return the response to it. The get resource method is used to return the report resource to the requested key. The process report method is used to process the report request and returns the result. Now let's add routing information. Routing is the process of directing an HTTP request to a controller. The functionality of this processing is implemented in system.web.routing. Add the action parameter in the route template. Let's enable cross-origin requests. Browser security prevents report viewer from making requests to your web API service when both run in different domains. To allow access to your web API service from a different domain, we must enable cross-origin requests. Open the startup.cs file. Call add curse in startup.configure services. It adds curse services to the app service container. The report viewer uses the MVC pattern controller actions for report processing. To achieve this, call at MVC and set enable endpoint routing to false. Then in the configure method add app.use MVC. Next, open the report viewer controller.cs file. Add the enable curse attribute to the report viewer controller class and specify the policy name which is given in startup.configure services. Let's register the valid license token. Open the startup.cs file and enter the code snippet to register the license token in configure method. License tokens can be generated from the downloads section of the bold report site. I've provided the user guide documentation link in the video description. Select Embedded Reporting. And click Generate Token. 
Copy the token. In the startup.cs file, register the license token. Now let's set a report path and service URL. This is where the RDL report is processed and rendered in the browser using the web API service. The report path property sets the path of the report file and the service URL property specifies the report web API service URL. Open the index.cshtml page and set the report path and report service URL properties. To preview the report, build and run the application. You can see the sales order detail report is loaded in the bold report viewer. In this video, we learned how to integrate the report viewer component in an ASP.NET Core application. Stay tuned to this channel for our upcoming videos on bold reports. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.